Well, we don't really know what's happening. We changed our provider this past week for various reasons, our internet provider, and that went fine. Thursday and Friday, we had internet and everything. This morning we got here and we have no internet. So, what that means is just that the folks who are joining me on Zoom are joining me through my phone, which, believe it or not, seems to be working just fabulously at the moment. The challenge for that, for the folks on the internet, is going to be that I'm not sure how music is going to sound through my phone. I'm going to do what I can. And it also means I'm going to do what I can, which means I'm going to, because we, we have this wonderful time with our All Saints today. I want the folks here, because some of our family are on Zoom, so I want them to be able to see it. So I might have to do this every once in a while. So that means you here don't get distracted by that, okay? We're all... We can all still worship God while I have my phone in my hand. It's all going to be fine. It's just going to be a little different, okay? So I think we're going to accomplish everything, hopefully. Um, we're able to actually record the service so that eventually we can post it online for those who would rather see something a little nicer than what they're going to see right now, okay? So again, if you're joining me on here late, because I see people are coming on, we're having some technical issues, but hopefully you're going to be able to hear me through this. Um, I'm not going to be able to check the chats if you tell me that there's a problem. Phew, I don't know how to help you with that. <laughs> then you're going to have a problem. But for now, um, just give me a thumbs up if you're hearing me OK. Give me a thumbs up. All right, I saw a thumbs up. Good. All right, let's go. Here we are. Let's forget about all that stuff. Well, we're not going to forget about it. It's the reality at the moment. But good to have you all here. As I said, it is All Saints Sunday. And so what, is, what has been our custom here at St. John's for All Saints Sunday is we remember the saints that have gone before us in our church. And we will do that in the course of our service here in a bit by lighting candles, reminding us of who those folks were. Some of the family members are here and will light the candle for their loved one. Uh, some of them, as I said, are online and will be able to, uh, I'll, I'll make sure we're able to see what we're doing here. Okay. So again, thanks for being here with us for that. Um, I took a wonderful picture of our display out in the front of our building from our care center, and some of you contributed as well for the Denver uh, Halloween or Harvest display. And um, I took a picture, and we were going to show it, but I took that picture, sent it via email, which could not come in right now because of the internet problem. So those of you here, make sure you check it out on your way out today. Those of you online, we're going to get you a picture for that as soon as we can this week. Um, so, there's a number of pastoral concerns that I want to raise for all of us. So, a lot of things happened this week unrelated to technology, all right? Uh, first of all, um, Roland Gaiman was in the hospital at St. Joe's in Reading for a part of the week with some heart-related issues. They did some procedures, got that going, and I understand he is back at the Highlands at his apartment and doing better, but uh, recovering from that. Donna Meckley is at the Ephrata Wellspan Hospital, uh, where she is also dealing with some uh, heart-related issues that they're working on, and so she's been there a few days. They need her to stay another day, I think at least today, to kind of make sure some of the stuff they're doing is working. So Donna appreciates our prayers. Gladys Getz is also a patient at the Ephrata Wellspan Hospital. Uh, Gladys had a fall, and they were checking on some other things uh, that she was dealing with. So she is there, as far as I know, I'm pretty sure she still is. The plan is for her to go to the Gardens of Stevens to do some more rehab, and then hopefully get back home to, to Kenny. So keep Gladys and Kenny in your prayers. And then their son, Michael, who has been contacting me about their situation, ended up in the emergency room all night last night dealing with a cyst in his mouth. So he appreciates our prayers as well. So a lot going on there. I know Alan is on with us. Alan Meckley continues his, uh, uh, he has to go back and forth to Hershey every other day to get different uh, 
uh, transfusions and things like that related to what they're doing with his bone marrow. That's going okay. Continue to keep him in your prayers. Linda Meckley, continue to keep in prayer as she's in the process of uh, every three week chemo treatment and she just uh, is in week number two of that. I know she appreciates that as well. So those are the pastoral care things going on in the life of our church. A couple joys and celebrations. The flowers today are from Barry and Brenda, whose anniversary is actually next Sunday, but they have the flowers in for date. So we'll, in case we don't get to see you personally, Barry and Brenda are sitting in here. Congratulations on your anniversary. And then also, I would be really in big, big trouble, since I just mentioned that, to not say that. Actually, today is my parents' 180th anniversary, or well, I don't really know how long it is. But congratulations and happy anniversary to my parents who are, are hopefully still watching. I assume they're still on here. So happy anniversary. So we have some joys as well as some concerns. So we, we just keep them in mind as, as we are the church. David, go right ahead. All right. So David, in case not everybody could hear, uh, let us know that with all of our Harvest Home donations over the past month, we were able to contribute to the Effort Area Social Service Food Bank over 400 pounds of paper products and food. So great job. They, they much appreciate that. And uh, again, the church came through in a, in a wonderful way. So thank you. And I know there were some, also some uh, financial donations. So thank you very much for all that. All right, so I'm calm. Are you calm? We're all calmed down. We're thankful, too, today to have our handbell folks with us again, and we look forward to them a little later, and hopefully I can get that to sound decently enough for those online. But I invite us all at this point to just bring ourselves before the Lord, and let's come before him in prayer. Father God, I thank you. We thank you that we can enter into your presence in whatever format we are doing so right now, that we can come together as your church and be your people and let you move us by your spirit in worship and devotion and by your word. We are grateful today for your light in our lives. And even though there are loved ones whose light here in this earth, in this place, have been extinguished. We know there are even a brighter light with you in heaven, surrounded, sur being part of the surroundings of your throne, giving you praise. But we don't wait for that day for ourselves. We do it right now. We come with our thanks, our praise, and our worship, and meet us here in this time together. In Jesus' name, amen. Let Philip's prelude lead us into this time of devotion and worship before the Lord.
They don't always get to see this kind of scene, so I'll let them see the folks that are here with us. Thank you, Philip, for bringing us into worship with music, and especially a very uh, familiar song such as How Great Thou Art in a Tomb. God is great above anything that we experience, anything that we go through, so it is just comforting and assuring and a great joy for us to be able to come into the presence of such a great God. He is greater than our sins. So what better time than now to acknowledge those sins and put them in God's hands. So let's take a moment and continue to calm ourselves before God by unloading the things that weigh heavily on us, the guilt and the shame of our sinfulness, and bring that to him. Let's pray. Most holy God, those things that get in the way of your greatness in our life, the things that we give more greatness to than you, those are our sins. Those are reflections of our sinful ways and our sinful nature. Forgive us, Lord, for putting anything above you, for declaring glory and honor power and might to any other king or kingdom, reign or glory that we might see around us. Forgive us for allowing anything else to have more power than you, anything else to have more power than love. So forgive us for our hate, forgive us for our resentments, our unforgiveness. Forgive us for our angers and our frustrations. Forgive us for where we allow our hurt to turn into something more than it needs to be. Forgive each of us, Lord, as we bring our hearts before you, our lives before you. And may we find release and forgiveness and mercy in you. For we pray and ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Know that in Jesus' name, I can stand before you and each one of you could stand before all of us as well because we're all part of the saints of Christ. We're all ministers of God. We're all part of his glory. But I stand before you right now and I say what we know to be true. I remind us that because of Jesus Christ and what he has done for us from the cross, we are forgiven. The guilt is taken away. The shame need no longer be. And we can have peace and assurance in knowing God's love is forever. Bask and live and find your strength in that love now and always. Amen. I'm actually going to turn to our scripture passages now. Do this a little differently today. I have two readings. The first one is from Revelation, chapter 7, beginning with verse 9 to verse 17. After this, I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb robed in white with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice saying, salvation belongs to our God who is seated on the throne and to the lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God singing, amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me saying, who are these robed in white 
and where have they come from? I said to him, sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, these are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason, they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd and he will guide them the springs of water of life and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. And the second reading is from Romans chapter 8 verses 35 to 39. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loves us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers nor height nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation is able to separate us from the love of God through Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of God may add his blessings to the reading and to the hearing of it. With the word of God there is peace. With the declaration of forgiveness there is peace. So I want us to take a moment, I'm gonna un you can unmute yourselves on Zoom and I'll kind of turn you up and maybe people can hear you, but I'm going to invite us all to share the peace of Christ with one another verbally. So the peace of Christ be with you all. Share that with each other. Peace of Christ be with you all. Peace of Christ be with you all. Peace of Christ be with you. Peace of Christ be with you all. The Christ be with you all. Wow, that was good. Yeah. All right. I'm going to mute you all again. We heard enough from you now, so muting. <laughs> All right. Bring it back here. Okay. So, again, hopefully there's not distraction with this. I'm going to invite Maggie to come on up with me. And again, I'm going to invite us to take this time now to just consider the saints who have joined God around this throne that we just read about in Revelation. A throne in which all who are present are bowing before God and declaring his power and his might and his greatness. We all have loved ones who are around that throne. And some of you with us today have loved ones who have surrounded that throne in the last year. So we remember them. So I invite us all to pause our hearts at the moment and let me offer prayer. Gracious God, we thank you now that you have secured by the name of Jesus Christ the presence of all your saints, all your believers around your throne. And that though the last days and weeks and months for many have been difficult going through their loss, going through their ordeal of loss. You have assured us that your faithful, your beloved, are with you. We thank you for them, and we remember them together now. The lights that they have been to us, may they shine before you, and their memories shine in our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. 
So again, I know there are some who are here representing their family member, and if that is the case, when I read your family member's name and you would like to come up and light the candle, just come from your seat and come forward. Maggie will give you the stick, and you can light any one of these candles right here. All right. We remember our saint and sister, Viola Redke. We remember our saint and sister, Dawn Hall. We remember our saint and brother, Milton Steffi. We remember our brother and saint, Robert Hall. We remember our sister and saint, Jean Behrendt. We remember our sister and saint, Ruth Laura. We remember our brother and saint, Kim Kegarize. We remember our sister and saint, Verna Harding. We remember our brother and saint, Irvin Ames. And we light one final candle for all those in your life who perhaps in this past year have gone before the Lord. Again, a light that no longer shines brightly in your life, but a light nonetheless before our God and a memory that shines in our hearts. We light for those who have gone before us this year. Most holy God, again, we are grateful that you have never left us to ourselves in this walk of faith. You have brought people in our lives who have proven to be saints among us, not because they have been great and mighty and glorious in some way, but somehow, in some moment, they kept the faith 
in a way that perhaps touched our lives to continue in that faith as well. We thank you for those saints. We commit them once again to you. And we ask, Lord, that you would again generate in our own hearts and lives a reminder that we are your saints now, that we might be ones to declare you to all the world as well, and that our lights might shine today. Thanks be to you, O God. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for doing that again this week. I appreciate it very much. Not sure how, the, how it sounded online, but hopefully you were able to get the gist of that. I'm going to invite us before the word today uh, one more time into a time of prayer, so join me. Faithful God, this has been a, 
a time before you today that has honored your greatness and your presence. And so as we come before you now to hear from your word and hopefully are directed by your spirit to, to a life that is different because of your word, may our hearts be open to you. Again, release for each of us anything that's, that's binding us, anything that we're hanging on to, any of our challenges or struggles in life, any of the ordeals of life that we are enduring right now. All that's hanging over us with our, our nation and the week ahead and our world and just our own personal lives. Just take that and free us up to know who we are because we are in your presence. Take our pastoral concerns for Alan and Linda and Donna and Gladys and, and Mike and Roland. Take all that and assure us and assure them that you're with them. And let your peace reign in us as your word spills over into our hearts. For we pray this all in the name of Jesus and pray together what he taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So the second and last word in that familiar prayer for us is forever. For thine is the glory, is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Forever is a word that I think of when I think about saints, because I think of them as, at least in our context, the way we use that word today, and when we use it in the concept of All Saints Day, we're thinking of people who have gone to God forever, for eternity. And so when I think of saints in that respect, I think of people who are in their forever stage at this point with the Lord. It made me think about talking about forever today. Seems like an odd thing to talk about, but stay with me. Forever is a challenging concept for us in many ways. I mean, first of all, it's just in general a hard thing to imagine. We just can't imagine forever. I mean, what is forever? I, I did a search for that on the computer. What, what is forever? And it gave me all sorts of answers. It gave me sentimental answers like, you know, love and happiness and friendship are forever. And memories are forever. And, and a girl's best friend is forever. I don't know, ladies, you can tell me if that's true or not. I, I work with a lot of ladies in hospice, and I'm just not sure that that's as true as that says. But then it gives me theological and, and kind of metaphysical answers, like what is forever? Well, the universe is forever. And God is forever. And our souls are forever. Superman supposedly is forever. And then there's the scientific answers. Energy is forever. Protons are forever. Metal is forever. Death is forever. And then lastly, there were some practical answers. What is forever? Taxes are forever. Diamonds are forever, they say. Plastic and plastic bags, sadly, are forever. Permanent marker is forever. Tattoos are forever. And fruitcakes are forever. So we can't really fathom this concept of forever, so that makes it challenging. Along with that, there's also the, the, the reality that we can you know, we have confusing ideas of what this word really means because we use it in so many haphazard and colloquial ways. I mean, we're already probably saying things like the election campaign season has gone on forever. It'll take forever to find out who's going to be the next, the next president, you know? Or you say things like, I can wish I could hold you in my arms forever. My fav one of my favorite movies, Willy Walker and the Chocolate Factory, he created an everlasting gobstopper. I've had one and it didn't last forever. I've had a lot of them and they don't last forever. Some of you might be thinking, 
this sermon's going to go on forever. So this concept of forever, again, is one that is confusing because of the way we use the word. And then it's also a challenging concept because we're just not geared for forever as human beings. We really aren't. Think about, think about uh, your uh, attention span. So statistics or whatever showed in the year 2000, the average attention span of humans was 12 seconds. Okay? The average attention span now, 20 years later, is said to be eight seconds. Now here's something to consider, and maybe you've heard this before. The average attention span of a goldfish is nine seconds. So a goldfish has more of an attention span than we humans do. Not so good. In the workplace, it is said that every two minutes, a worker is looking, at least an office workspace, every two minutes, an employee is looking at their email. Every two minutes, we're being distracted from what the attention we have on maybe our important work to checking our emails. Every two minutes. On a computer, one out of every five pages people view. One out of every five pages they only view for less than four seconds. So we're not even looking at this stuff very long. And in a, in a setting like this where somebody is giving a speech or someone is, you're paying attention to somebody as a group. So here's the Here's the statistics on that. After 10 seconds of the speech, 10 seconds, there's still 90% of the people listening or, or paying attention. After 20 seconds, it goes down to 80%. After a half a minute, 30 seconds, it's down to 66%. After two minutes, it's down to less than a quarter of the people are listening, 23%. After three minutes, it's about 16%. And after five minutes, which is probably where I'm at right now, it's only about 9%. Okay? So about one out of it, there's about 35, 40 of you here, so maybe two of you are still listening. Thank you. And there's about 40 on the Zoom, and about two of them are listening. So we're not, we're not built for this forever idea. We get bored easily. How many times have you heard people say, it's not just kids anymore, it's just adults. I'm bored. I'm bored. So we get bored easily. We have a temporary nature to everything in our society. Everything is disposable. We don't keep anything very long. So how can we consider forever when we can't even keep a whole of a, you know, a, dis a, a disposable razor for more than a couple times? So we live in this disposable, temporary society. We get caught up in trends and fashion, so our attics and our closets are full of stuff that one day was in, but it's not in anymore. We wouldn't be caught wearing it or interacting with it any longer. So again, if we're like that with our stuff, how can we ever comprehend and consider forever? And we're instant gratification people. We're an instant gratif gratification society. We want an immediate experience. Someone said, we need to have the flat screen, high definition television right now, and for that, we are willing to sacrifice our future. So think about like Black Friday, the evolution of that, that big shopping day after Thanksgiving. At one time, you used to go there for the sales to get the stuff for Christmas for a month from now. Now people go to Black Friday to get the sales for themselves. They don't go buy, buy a, black, a big screen TV for somebody else, they're buying it for them. We want it now, we want it immediately. So it's hard for us to comprehend forever. And then, when somebody tells us heaven is going to be one big forever church service, we say, no way! We're almost willing to give in our heaven if it's going to be that, because we know church oftentimes is just one of the most boring things that we go to. And then we come across this passage in Revelation, and others like it, that recount for us what heaven is sort of like. And again, I'm just going to read some of that. John says, after this I looked and there was a great multitude that, that uh, no one could count 
from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages. They were standing before the throne, before the Lamb, robed in white, palm branches in their hands. They were crying out with a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne, and to the Lamb. And the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they, they fell on their faces before the throne, and they worshiped God, saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. There it is, forever and ever. A Greek concept that, that was in contrast to those things which came to an end. They came up with this word and this concept of forever, that there are some things that do not have an end. And it was applied to this worshiping in the presence of God will never have an end. It was applied to God's things, God's kingdom, God's ways, God's mercy and glory are forever. They never have an end. They transcend time. What is forever isn't so much time as the kingdom and the power and the glory of God. Forever less applies to this concept of going on and on and on and on as it does to what goes on and on and on and on. The kingdom and the power and the glory and the ways of God go on and on. We're a month away from Advent, but let me share an Advent passage with you that you're familiar with. An angel comes to Mary. And the angel says to Mary, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the most high. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom, there will be no end. Forever for us, isn't about the time period. It's about the reality, the fact, the belief that there is no kingdom, there is no power, there is no glory that can ever supersede the kingdom and the power and the glory of God Almighty and Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. That those things have, will, and always will be the power and the glory and the might. The truth about forever, someone has said, is that it is happening right now. Forever is forever. It's been, it is, and it will be. And it keeps going. It's that, the forever symbol, I would have had it on a PowerPoint, but we're not using that right now. The forever symbol is kind of that figure eight. It keeps going. It is, it was, it will be. It is, it was, it will be. And so when we pray that Lord's Prayer again, let's go back to that where it concludes with forever. In the midst of it, we pray on earth as it is in heaven. On earth as it is forever. So what's in heaven? Again, what did I read? And what, here, here's the, the rest of that passage from Revelation. For this reason, they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated in the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the lamb is at the center of the throne, and he will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of water of life, and God will wipe every tear from their eyes. What is in, for, what is in heaven and forever that we pray is here and now? It's, it's God being worshipped. It's people of all sorts, from all tribes and all places, being able to come before God, being acknowledged with respect and love and reverence. It's God sheltering. It's God providing with his, with, from himself for hunger and for thirst and for protection and for safety. It's Jesus being the, the guide. It's Jesus, not someone or something else, but Jesus being the prototype, if you will, and the model and the example and the one who goes before us. It's in Jesus that we get refreshed. That's what's happening in heaven. That's what we pray happens here. That's what Jesus taught us to pray happens here, meaning 
forever of heaven is indeed also applicable and livable and real here and now. With the coming of Christ has come the assurance that God's kingdom and power and glory have triumphed already. It's already happening no matter what ordeal we're going through. Again, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might to our God forever and ever. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Forever is not so much about the time you're possibly stuck in. It's not about the time, but the condition that always, that forever surrounds you. It's a condition of hope that we're promised. The hope that has been promised to our saints who are enjoying that forever of heaven. It's the hope that is promised at the end of the famous 23rd Psalm. For goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. In that condition where there is no longer sadness and tears, and there is no longer want and need, where there is God, forever is that condition that we've been promised. But, and... It's not just a condition we've been promised. It's a condition that is our reality right now. It is our reality in the here and now. For I am convinced, said Paul, that neither death nor life nor angels nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor heights nor depths nor anything else in all of creation is able to separate us from the love of God through Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing we experience, no ordeal we go through, no amount of time can ever separate us from God's love. That's forever. That surrounds us. That's a condition that surrounds us all the time. So we, God's people, who we are, we, now and in eternity, are these saints. We use that word, saints. But what are saints ultimately? Saints are those who live in the forever. Saints are those who live the forever. We are the ones who have come out of our great ordeals in life. As it said in Revelation 7, these are the ones who came out of the great ordeal. We are the ones who come out of our ordeals, whatever they might be, Living the forever, anyway. Living the forever of worshiping God. Living the forever of declaring and offering deliverance and God's love to everyone, to anyone, to all the people around us. Living the forever of tending to God's sheltering and tending to God's sharing of of himself to those in hunger and those who thirst and those who need someone. We are living the forever of letting Jesus Christ be our guide, not someone or something else, of being refreshed in Christ. So tie this in to the immediate. Tie this in to now. This isn't a, a message just to to comfort us about those who've gone before us. This is a message to strengthen us now because you and I, as people of faith, as people who follow Christ, we are the ones now living forever, living the forever. And we need it because we live in a world that's dictated by fear. We had Halloween yesterday, a holiday or whatever you want to call it, that oftentimes is associated with scaring and and kind of glorifying the fear factor of things. We didn't need Halloween. We had a pandemic for the last nine months that's created enough of fear for us. We have this election thing that's just creating all sorts of fear. And this week is just going to be a fearsome kind of time, a scary time. And it's already been determined to be a scary time. And we don't know how long that fear is going to continue. However, we are the saints. We live, I don't want to say we live apart from that fear because it's very real. We live in this ordeal. 
but we live in it, living the forever in the midst of it. We continue in the midst of this stuff that we're supposed to be afraid of, this stuff that's supposed to have power over us, the ordeals in our life. We live in those ordeals, the forever. We continue to worship God. We continue to tend to those around us. We continue to show God's love as something that cannot be taken away from anybody. No matter who's in the presidency, no matter what's going on in your health, no matter how full the hospitals are or what you need or what you're going through, what loss you're experiencing, in the midst of all that, we are people who put our lives into the forever of Jesus Christ that says, love has already won. The kingdom and the power and the glory of God Almighty in Christ has triumphed before, is triumphing now, and will continue to triumph through it all. What is forever is the kingdom and God's ways. And like the cloud of witnesses cited in Hebrews in scripture, we, people of faith, are the people who live in the forever. We press on in the forever of God's love and God's mercy and God's grace. Here's what it says in Hebrews. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and that sin, the sin that clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and the perfecter of our faith. So again, we are the people who have come through the ordeal, be it this coming week's ordeal, be it last week's ordeal of your life, be it an ordeal you're yet to experience. We are coming through it because we are living the forever of God shown to us in Jesus Christ. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Lord God, may your forever reign within us and through us. Let us know it is not just something in heaven reserved for us for one day, but it is something that is our lives today, that this world, this earth, needs to have a taste of your heaven and you have called us as your church, as the body of Christ, to be the ones to share it. So again, as this day progresses, as this week progresses, as these, this life that we have progresses, may we never let the ordeals overwhelm us, but may we live the forever and show the world your love always. In Jesus' name we give you thanks. Amen. And now I say to everyone, Thank you for putting up with everything, especially you folks. And may you go into this day knowing that it is a day that the Lord has made. The world might make it an ordeal, but God has already made it a blessing of his presence, his might, and his glory. So may you walk in it, talk in it, and share the love of Christ in it, now and always. Amen. As we prepare to go, I invite you to again wait to be kind of dismissed, those of you who are here. Those of you who are here and have lit a candle, we'd like you to take that candle with you in a remembrance of today, and we will try to get the candle to the folks who weren't able to be with us. But again, may these lights shine as you go to be that light now. Amen. Amen.